grace and peace be with you. Welcome to the Rockford District Worship Service. I am Pastor Donna Hoffman, serving the Pearl City and McConnell United Methodist Churches, and I'm also serving as the Rockford District Shepherding Team Chair. And it is our prayer that this service will truly bless you. So come, let us worship. All right, please uh, join me as uh, we do the call to worship based on Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because his faithful love lasts forever. That's what those who are redeemed by the Lord say, the ones God redeemed from the power of their enemies. The ones God gathered from various countries, from east and west, north and south. So they cried out to the Lord in their distress, and God brought them out safe from their desperate circumstances. 
Some of the redeemed had wandered into the desert, into the wasteland. They couldn't find their way to a city or town. They were hungry and thirsty. Their lives were slipping away. So they cried out to the Lord in their distress, and God delivered them from their desperate circumstances. God led them straight to human habitation. Let them thank the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all people. Because God satisfied the one who was parched with thirst, and he filled up the hungry with good things. God quieted the storm to, to a whisper. The sea's waves were hushed. So they rejoiced because the waves had calmed down. Then God led them to the harbor they were hoping for. Let them thank the Lord for his faithful love and his wondrous works for all people. Let them exalt God in the congregation of the people and praise God in the assembly of the elders. Amen. My name is Pastor Jeff Brace, and I'm uh, the pastor of the Shemung and Capron United Methodist Church. Shall we pray uh, this morning? Great and awesome God, you speak to us a word of peace that calms our troubled seas. You care for us, God. You nudge us away from fear and towards faith in you. And you are here with us always, God. You fill us with awe, but it also raises many questions that there are no easy answers to. Open our eyes to see you here in our boat. May you strengthen our hearts for the challenges you, that lie ahead. And open our ears to hear the word you speak. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. dismayed whatever betide God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide God will take care of you God will take care of you through every day or all the way he will take care of God will take care of you. Through days of toil when heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fierce your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, He will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be Denied, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be, the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. We invite you to be in a spirit of prayer as we offer the prayer of the people. Oh God, we come before you, troubled and helpless. 
troubled by the enormity of challenges before us and helpless at our abilities to fix them. But perhaps feeling small is the best reminder for us to pray. Prayer is how we actively practice believing so simply, so confidently that you, God, have the world in your hands. It's our prayer where we bring up all of our requests to God in our prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. We pray. <laughs> For the sick and infected, God, heal and help. Sustain bodies and spirits. For those in need of regular therapies and treatments that must be rescheduled or postponed, God, help them to stay patient and positive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our vulnerable populations, God, protect our elder, elderly and those suffering from chronic disease. Provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. For the homeless, <clears throat> unable to practice the protocols of social distancing in the shelter or the streets. Protect them from disease and grant them their human necessities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. For our local, state, and federal governments, God, help our elected officials as they allocate equitably the necessary resources for combating this pandemic to all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our scientific community, leading the charge to understand this disease and communicate its gravity. God, give them knowledge, wisdom, and a persuasive voice, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. For those with mental health challenges who feel isolated, anxious, and helpless, God, provide them every necessary support, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. Young children at home and for the foreseeable future, God help mothers and fathers to partner together creatively for the care and flourishing of their children. For single mothers and fathers, grow their networks of support. <laughs> also for parents who cannot stay home from work but must find care for their children, God present them with creative solutions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For business leaders making difficult decisions that affect the lives of their employees, God, give these women and men wisdom and help them to lead self-sacrificially. And for the workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, God, keep them from panic and inspire your church to generously support them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For frontline healthcare workers, we thank you for their vocational call to service. Give them compassion for every patient in their care. God, keep them and their families safe and healthy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. For high school, college, and university students whose courses of study have changed, whose placements are delayed or canceled <laughs> and, gradua and graduation ceremonies are uncertain, God show them that while life is uncertain, their trust is in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For pastors and church leaders faced with the challenges of social distancing, God help them to creatively imagine how to pastor their congregates and communities and to love them well. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. For our churches in every neighborhood, community, and city in the Rockford District, may your Holy Spirit inspire us to pray, to give, to love, to serve, and to proclaim the gospel that the name of Jesus Christ might be glorified around the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear prayer. our prayer. God, we trust that you are good and do good. Teach us to be your faithful people in this time of global crisis. Help us to follow in the footsteps of our faithful shepherd, Jesus, who laid down his life for the sake of love. Glorify his name and your peace that exceeds all understanding. 
will keep our hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever My name is Violet Joniker and I'm the pastor of Brook Road United Methodist Church in Rockford. And this is Lincoln. Today we're going to tell you the story of Jesus and the storm. And Lincoln is going to play Jesus. We're going to read to you from his The Rhyme Bible. The Storm, Mark 4. Jesus was tired from preaching all day. It's time, he said, to get away. Near the dock, some fishing boats lay, so they got in a boat and sailed away. A gentle breeze began to blow as the evening sun was sinking low. The disciples sailed across the deep, and soon Jesus fell fast asleep. But suddenly the wind grew strong. It pushed the little boat along. When thunderclouds began to form, the disciples knew it was a storm. The waves grew tall and splashed around. The wind made such a howling sound. The little boat pitched up and down until they cried, we're going to drown. Jesus, wake up, don't you care? The waves are splashing everywhere. Yeah, they were trying to wake up Jesus. But Jesus, look how much it's storming. Oh no, we're so scared. What should we do? Oh no. Jesus lifted up his head. He looked around and then he said, be calm, be still, O oh wind and sea. And it was calm immediately. The disciples couldn't believe their eyes. The storm had stopped to their surprise. But Jesus said, you need not fear. Don't you know that I was here? Have faith in God. He's always near. And then everybody was so happy when the storm stopped. Can we say your prayer, Lincoln? Dear God, thank you so much for being with us even when it's stormy and getting us through the tough and scary times. Bless and be with all of the kids in our churches and in our communities. Amen. Can you say bye? Can you say bye?
open, 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 open the door and we'll come in. Behold, behold, I stand at the door and knock, knock, knock. Behold, behold, I stand at the door and knock, knock, knock. If anyone hears my voice, if anyone hears my voice, Open, open, open the door, I will come in, I will come in. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is good and a joyful thing to always give out praise and honor and glory to God. Uh, it is time for our offering and we invite you to take part in our service by giving an offering to your local church or if you do not have a local church, a church that is nearby you uh, to give an offering to support the ministry in this time in our life, which is definitely needed even though we are not in the building, the church must go on. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for blessing the works of our hands. And we ask you, O oh Lord God, to bless this offering for the building up of the kingdom of heaven while we are yet on this earth. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. The scripture reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Listen for God. Later that day, when evening came, Jesus said to them, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd and took him in the boat just as he was. Other boats followed along. Gale force winds arose and waves crashed against the boat so that the boat was swamped. Jesus was looking at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? He got up and gave orders to the wind and said to the lake, silence. Be still. The wind settled down, and there was a great calm. Jesus asked them, Why are you frightened? Don't you have faith yet? Overcome with awe, they said to each other, Who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the word of God for all the people. Thanks be to God. Amen. My dear siblings in Christ from the Rockford District, it is a joy to share with you the Word of God as part of the district service that we have prepared for you in these challenging times. I want to invite you, please, be in a spirit of prayer and pray with me. Loving and merciful God, we are ready to meditate on your Word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. My dear friends, we all know that Jesus loved the Sea of Galilee. Jesus gets in and out of the boats many times, and it isn't hard to imagine why this is. The Sea of Galilee is captivating. Ask people who have been to the Holy Land to share, to tell you their favorite part of the experience. And most of them probably will share with you the experience of crossing the Sea of Galilee. Jesus and the disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee many times. And some of the most beloved stories from Jesus' ministry happened at the Sea of Galilee. The passage for today tells us that Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowds and stepped into the boat to, be to begin their journey across the lake. Jesus went to the back, lay down on a cushion and fell asleep. After a while, a sudden and tremendous storm came up. Let me ask you, have you been in the middle of a storm? Well, I will never forget 
couple of years ago when I was driving in the middle of a storm. I couldn't continue driving. I couldn't see anything. The street where I was driving was under construction, but I found a spot along the side where I could park. So I stopped there. I waited for a while until the storm slowed down. It was a scary moment. The Bible tells us that, it, that the disciples were in the middle of a terrible storm, several miles from the shore. It is important to keep in mind that some of the disciples were fishermen. They were accustomed to fishing during bad weather and to unanticipated circumstances. This tells us that what was happening that night was out of the ordinary. It was something that they had never experienced. In that moment, they were not thinking about the fact that Jesus was right there in the boat with them. They thought they were going to die. They did not think about the Son of God being right there in that bo boat. They thought about dying. So the disciples woke Jesus up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we are drowning? At that moment, Jesus demonstrated that he was the Lord over the wind and the rain. Jesus rebuked the wind and the seas by saying, Silence! Be still! And everything became calm. That day, Jesus brought peace in the middle of the storm. And of course, there is a lesson for us today. Storms come in different forms. Think about the storm we are facing today in the world and in our country. But not only that, many situations and experiences terrify us. In those moments, Jesus wants us to remember that if we invite him, he will always be in the boat with us. That doesn't mean that we won't go through storms or that we won't, won't be terrified from time to time. Yet the story points to the truth that even in the midst of the storm, he will be with us. We don't have to be afraid. Sometimes the storms of life that we face are self-made. Sometimes the storms happen because we live in a, in a fallen world. Sometimes the storms happen to equip us for further ministry. Jesus calmed the storm. Jesus was with the disciples in their fears and doubt. And Jesus is with us in our fears and doubts today. Friends, our faith as Christians is secure when we recognize and live every day knowing in the very depth of our heart that God is always with us. Even during every storm that we face, it is during our storms that we must remind ourselves that God is right there, beside us, even when everything around us, the circumstances, the people, and most important, our emotions, are doing their best to convince us that He is not. In these challenging times, in these uncertain times, do not be afraid, because Jesus is on the boat. If you are going through financial difficulty, remember, Jesus is in your boat. If you are suffering from sickness, remember, Jesus is right there. If you are depressed or anxious, cheer up. 
because Jesus is in your boat. Friends, Jesus calmed the storm, not according to the disciples' timing, but on his divine timing. Remember, he could have spoken to the winds at any time. He could have stopped the storm before it started. Jesus had something to teach the disciples, and Jesus has always something to teach us today. The Lord has given us his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. No matter how strong the storm might seem, no matter the force of the waves that beat upon your boat, Jesus is with you. The one who calmed the storms yesterday is the one who is calming our storms today. Do not be afraid. Trust in the Lord. We are not alone in this journey. He is with us and He will be with us always. So my dear siblings in Christ, praise Him, adore Him, give thanks to Him always. He deserves all glory and honor now and forevermore. And remember, Jesus is with us in our storm. Amen. I'm sure by now that you would have reached down in my dark tears away, stepped in and saved the day once again. I say amen, that it's still raining. As the thunder rolls, I barely hear whisper through the rain. I'm with you. As mercy falls, I raise my hands and praise the God who gives and takes away. Raging in the storm, and I will lift my hands. Cause you are who you are, and everywhere I am, and every tear I cry, you hold me in your hands. Never left my side, no heart is cold. I'm raging in the storm.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Fear not, Jesus who calmed down the wind is with you. Go now in peace and do good, do no harm, and stay in love with God. Amen. Receive my 